So I'm here to share a story of a, a grassroots community-led experience, uh, an effort that began in res response to the post-election violence in, in Kenya in 2007 to 2008. Um, I'm really, uh, if you, uh, I'm gonna show a short video. If you have a problem with violence, I would look away for one minute. kitu ilitoka wakati kura iliposemekana atilibio Nearly 2000 people were reported dead 600000 people were displaced into squalid camps and reduced to beggars Brother was killing a brother friend was killing a friend Ni maiti tu imelala kwa barabara Pigs and bodies here Matumbo ikatoka na nje ikashikiliwa na ingose ya I did participate Tulichoma matatu pale juu We did it Kuna issues ambazo, for instance, kama hizo za IDPs. Hawaja zisofu. You must watch this. After they watch, ask them, are you ready to continue campaigning now for 2012? Or are you ready to preach peace? So I know it's a little bit difficult to watch, but it's important in a context where your country's leadership pushes you to forget and move on, and where photos from the post-election violence were, were never published even in the media. So my Kenyan colleagues took the photos to the streets, literally in street exhibitions, Kichantani. They created a film of stories that people shared in response to seeing those photos, testimonials from different communities uh, with people from different ethnicities. And then we used that film as a tool for peace building across the country. It's the first time I'm sharing this. There's a lot to share, so I'm gonna try to distill a, a little bit of that, and I hope you take from it what you will. Um, it's, it's difficult to watch, but the strange thing is that the reaction uh, to the film was almost universal. It, people were actually glad to see it. It provoked and it allowed for conversations that they hadn't had. And the thing is that what happened is still current. It's been years, but it's still a part of people's lives. It just was kind of pushed into the past, and even today, people continue to suffer. There are a lot of people who are still displaced. There's no support and no justice in what happened. The, the kind of ironic thing is that the whole reason why we used a really difficult to watch film is to really have that momentum. So the reason why I took one minute out of the five to show you that is because what it does is create this kind of emotional opening that allows people to then engage and have conversations they would otherwise never have. I don't know how you run a peace building workshop without starting from something that can emotionally open people up. Because we're not experts at this, we're just, my, my colleague was a photographer who took these photos, um, not just these, but the original ones that were used in the exhibition. And so this has completely grown out of that, that effort. Um, so what we were able to do, and the reason why this slide is up, is to show some of the of kind of the emotional reaction to seeing the, the content. Um, and we used film, but we also used a number of other tools, and I think it was because they were together that it worked so well. So there's taking kind of, oh, and I should mention, I mean, there's, we've reached literally hundreds of thousands of Kenyans in at-risk communities, specifically from Nairobi slums to kind of tense rural communities on the ground through this program. So if you can kind of see the list, the, each image kind of links to one of the, the topics. So taking photography to the streets gave people access to the reality of what had happened, which had been lar largely hidden. A film of testimonials kind of furthered the depth of the conversations that happened and also allowed us to scale. Forums were moderated by local volunteers in local languages. Theater on the streets was about the only way to talk about uh, kind of complex ethnic discrimination that happens on a daily basis. Counseling was critical. We created spaces for people to heal and reflect with social workers ready to kind of assist. And there were peace pledges and SMS, which gave people a way to not only kind of share their feedback quietly, but also critically to stay in touch with us. So it wasn't just about a one-day program and you disappear and they can't quite remember who, who, was, who came and, and they don't have a way to reach you. This allowed for a way to kind of extend that engagement with people over a long time. 
And we found that people really craved more information in, that, in the context of what I described um, in Kenya, especially in the tense communities that we visited. So what we did was to prompt a discussion and create a safe space for people to then engage around these issues and really think about their role in the community and to contribute to a more peaceful and fair coming election um, where everybody was really worried about how things were going to go. So we launched the film in uh, the, the late, kind of late 2011 and then we conducted these particular efforts in a year and a half after that until the election. So these are just a few pictures from that. So in, in Nairobi alone, in seven weeks in 2012, we engaged 100,000 young people working with a team of 100 volunteer facilitators and 20 counselors. And then we partnered with the operators of community video dens and it was all uh, kind of programmed around the English Premier League, um, which captured an, kind of an at-risk uh, target community. So there's actually um, a, a lot more content, but I'm going to run through a little bit to say uh, the website that we have has a lot of different videos on it that provide tools that I think could be helpful to others as well. But we never make an effort to actually share. Um, we were too busy doing everything, and that's why it's me standing in front of you, the only non-Kenyan involved in the entire effort who, made the, who kind of tried to come out and share this because we, it's been a few years since the election, but uh, it's not really known about it. It's kind of off the radar. radar. And one of the things to, to note is that in terms of the actual expense of what we were able to do, we spent about a dollar per person engaged. And people remember for a long time afterwards what they did. And we would have done about five times as much of the same work if we'd had more funding, if we'd been better connected. And we just were, it's, it's just not really our space. Nobody that I work with would probably call themselves a peace builder, but that's exactly what we did that whole time. Um, we also could have done a lot more, um, like engaged by SMS the 50,000 people who signed pledge pieces, uh, peace pledges and opted into the, into the, the kind of knowing us and continuing with us. So I'm just gonna point to a couple lessons that I could share a lot of anecdotes that are illustrative of the way that things went. Uh, and there are a lot of specific details in the design of what we did that I think were critical to it working. But instead, I think it's better to share some general experiences, um, takeaways that, that might be useful to you in a broader sense. So one is um, to have an intuitive understanding of the needs of the community and to create ways to deal with the trauma uh, and the response if you really wanna have a lasting impact. So in this case, art, and in particular, particular bearing witness testimonials were really critical. That's what allowed us to raise those complex and difficult issues in conversation and engage people emotionally, as I mentioned. So I would say that the program would not have worked if it had not been for the photos and the art and the film involved. The other thing is the need to experiment and take risk. Um, there were many a lot of other things that we did that did not work. This is the one where we came up with it for the idea for the, the screenings, uh, sitting around in an empty office, talking about how to, how to scale with the film. You have a bunch of DVDs, most people will never access that. Can we, how do we access video equipment in marginalized communities? And that's how we ended up in those, those community spaces. 